Semi-final Friday on the Big Ten Network as we bring you the 2018 Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament from Westfield, Indiana, Grand Park. Once again, your host as we walk our way toward a champion. First game for semifinal Friday, number five seed Illinois against the number one seed Penn State Nittany Lions. Take a look at our Dr. Pepper tournament look. In fact, in tight games as you expect, only eight teams get in the Big Ten Women's Tournament. Penn State knocking off Michigan, Illinois, getting it done on penalty kicks. And hello, everybody. I'm Dean Linke. Delighted to be with USA International, Kate Mark Graff. And Kate, Penn State, your regular season champs, but really both teams playing their best soccer. And peaking at the right moment. In start of conference play, Penn State was 2-2, two and two, and now they put the pieces together, scoring some goals, and solid on defense. And for Illinois, they only won five games last season. Nobody expected them to be there, but improved defense, some leadership coming out of their veteran players, as well as some new recruits, has put both teams playing some of their best soccer at the right time. All right, let's start with Penn State, the Big Ten Midfielder of the Year, Emily Ogle. She's incredible. She's the player that controls everything, the true general and arguably the best midfielder in the Big Ten on both sides of the ball. She has five goals and five assists this season, but it's what she does defensively that makes this team so good. And for Illinois, a whole lot of M's in that midfield. Ah, Murray and Maroney, you've got the crafty one and the gritty one. They control the midfield for the Illini, making sure nothing gets through, but so dangerous on transition. Transition. Two phenomenal coaches, Erica Dombach and Janet Rayfield, lead their teams in semifinal number one. It's Penn State and it's Illinois for a spot in Sunday's championship game. Right now, when you grab a $5 double chalupa box, you can enter for a chance to win an exclusive Platinum Xbox One X. Only at Taco Bell. Put down the chalupa. Focus. Wrong button, buddy. Wrong button. Soccer on BTN is brought to you by Meyer. Sign up for M Perks. Get personalized rewards. Save 15% more each year at Meyer. You're just minutes from saving at mperks.com and by State Farm. Here to help life go right, talk to a State Farm agent today. Penn State, your reigning Big Ten tournament champions. They won it indoors. The weather horrendous a year ago. Knock on wood, we get better weather as Penn State knocked off Northwestern a year ago to win it. Let's take a look at Erica Dombach's starting lineup. A solid, balanced technical side that will look to isolate players in dangerous spots. So they're looking for number 19, Talia Ferry, who scored both goals in Penn State's overtime win the last time these two teams faced each other. Her ability to bring down any type of service, clean it up, and finish it is what makes her so dangerous. That's the Penn State Discover starting lineup. Let's take a look at the Illini Discover starting lineup. Well, playing in a 3-5-2, which is a high risk high reward system relies heavily on their back line barker and george and Catherine will need to hold down and prevent that explosive penn state offense and in goal for the Illini, number 30 jalen cunningham she is incredible in the last time last game in the quarterfinals she had a three save effort in penalty kicks and her athletic goalkeeping brought so much confidence into that side coming into today and for Penn State in goal, double zero, Amanda Dennis. Top 10 all time in wins at Penn State. And Coach John Buck says she is playing out of her mind right now. So much confidence and her communication to her back line is key to keeping them defensively sound. You said the key word, key. Let's take a look at the bear keys to this game. Well, for Illinois, they need to finish every single opportunity that they know against Penn State there won't be as many against other opponents because of their quality defense. And that means transitioning well on both sides of the ball whenever there is a turnover. And for Penn State, watch the first 20 minutes. You're going to hear them, the bench of Illinois. Penn State wants to match that with enthusiasm and that mentality and also learn how to handle the excellent pressure of the front two of Illinois. Favorite time of the year, semifinal Friday on the Big Ten Network. Delighted to be with you here for game number one. Minnesota and Nebraska will feature around 30 minutes or so after this one ends. Illinois in their dark uniforms. Penn State 
in their white uniforms. And as Kate told you, both teams, phenomenal form, but Penn State truly red hot. And you can use the word dominant over the last eight games in Big Ten play. Down near the end line. Real Big Ten Defender of the Year. And it's funny, you don't often say somebody that's a player of the year is still underrated, but she was not on the <laughs> Matt Kerman Trophy watch list. And I was surprised by that because I consider her one of the better defenders in the country. Defenders get no love because the stats that we have we have to earn in order to be noticed. The key to defending sometimes isn't so much your ability to do lockdown 1v1 defense. It's to prevent in advance the dangerous situations that come. And that comes to reading the game and excellent verbal communication. And that's something she does well that hasn't been recognized at a national level. Penn State putting passes together. Talia Ferry wearing number 19. First team all Big Ten selection. And Illinois going to take a shot from distance. Little deflection, no problem there for Amanda Dennis, the junior from San Diego, California. Erica Dombach, unbelievable job, 12th season, and another Big Ten title for Penn State. And with the Big Ten Coach of the Year this year, she's got four in her 12 years. That's a pretty good ratio just one of the best coaches in terms of breaking down opponents and figuring out the right way to attack others, as well as her recruiting system. I mean, she has a network in place globally. She's allowed to recruit some of the best players in high school soccer. Penn State pushing forward, knocked out of bounds by the Illini. Patricia George, part of that three-back system. Dombach and talking about Illinois' system under Janet Rayfield, one of the legends of the game, a true pioneer for women, not just in soccer, but women in sports, 17th season, and her record with the fighting Eli and I, solid, tough couple years, and she's got her team right back where you've grown to expect the Eli and I. It's great to have them back in the semifinals, a place they haven't been in several years. What she does so well is educate you on the game. I've played for both of these coaches and I learned so much in just four months that I had with Janet Rayfield because she breaks down positions and your responsibilities so well that if you don't know that coming in as a high school player, you're gonna grow exponentially under her tutelage in the first couple months. It's a great point. Both these coaches with a lot of experience with U.S. soccer, U.S. women's full national team and the youth national teams as well. In fact, at times they've been on staff together talking about some of the great stories they've shared. And that's one of the great things about their unification and even how they work with United Soccer Coaches, sharing what works. Illinois started the season in North Carolina, taking on the Tar Heels and Duke. Actually, we're leading North Carolina by a score of one to nothing, and then beat Duke just a couple days later. Duke was number three in the country. And you start to take a look at the resume for the Illini, and as you're doing your research, if as long as they don't get blown out here, it looks like they can get into the NCAA tournament. Penn State into the 18, they square it. Here's Penn State, the early opportunity. Well, Penn State's doing something so well as they're getting it into the midfield and then changing the point, changing from one wide channel to another, which buys time and space for Shiva, in this case, to get wide, get high, and be in an excellent position to receive the ball and attack the end line. It's Kim Dubs. As Carrie Abello, the left-footed player, is out with an injury. Dubs gets the start. The freshman from Switzerland played in front. Handled there by the athletic Jalen Cunningham, the junior from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Second team, all Big Ten this year, and showing that form, as you said, in penalty kicks against the Badgers. It's not very often you see the penalty kick score as 3-0, <laughs> and that just shows Cunningham stepping up big. It's like the save on Wayne Rooney last night. Did you see that? Yeah. Bad for DC. They made such a great run, right? They did. Oh, 
Tucked inside by Penn State, Marissa Shiva. The hero against Michigan, late in that one. Final minutes. Ellie Jean with the assist, the first assist of the season for Ellie Jean, finding Shiva for the game winner. Taking their time with the throw in. Ashley Cathro, the freshman from Canada. That'll be a turnover, a rare unforced air right there. Shea Moyer thought she had a defender along the inline. She didn't, so it's a corner kick for the Lion Eye. Morgan Maroney. Hope Breslin, who's had herself a big-time season with five goals and three assists, wearing the number 10 jersey. Sent in by the Illini. First ball, second ball handled by Penn State. He'll drop at the top of the 18, but Dennis knew it was not on frame. Not a huge fan of that corner kick. They only had three players in the box for as potential targets instead of playing the ball short pulling some more mid, uh, Nittany Lions out of the box look at that you don't see anybody from the line I really able to challenge for that ball set pieces are so critical in these games it's such a tight conference and it's the big moments like that in transition all the coaches talked about it and how key set pieces were that was a wasted opportunity Nice run down the right side from the Lion Eye. Just hit it though, and Penn State will get it back. This is the tenth Big Ten tournament meeting between these two teams. Penn State is six and three when they face the Lion Eye in the Big Ten tournament. It's the 32nd all-time meeting. The Nittany Lions hold a 27-4 and 0 series advantage. Of course, Penn State has been the premier program in Big Ten women's soccer for so long. Let's see, off the restart, LEG had that assist, has it ripped far side by the Illini. All the way through is Rio, misjudged it, and Rio comes back to win it. Look at the fight here from the Illini. That's the Big Ten Defender of the Year, and the Illini rip it right away. Well, that's Mayday going against Rail. The little speedster is gritty. Low center gravity, very difficult to knock off the ball. Yeah, Erica Dombach was concerned about that combination of Mayday and Silver from a defensive point of view, as we saw in your keys. Just, they both bring something different. And she didn't know how her back line was going to be able to handle that because she has two center backs that are very similar. They don't have, like, the speedy one. So Real is very tactical, very smart. Good lock, lockdown defender 1v1, but you wouldn't say extremely quick. Her two center backs are not speedsters. So it's going to be interesting to see if Illinois can find those moments to get in behind and create an opportunity to exploit that speed differential. I love that look there as well, Kate, as you saw the fight of May Day, knowing that Rio's not gonna blaze away from her. And got that leg in there and took it away. Maddie Elliston Nolf starts this attack. And she'll get it back. That's the right back making a long run. Now Nolf, top of the 18. Off again on that U-20 team a couple years ago with Emily Ogle and several other Penn State Nittany Lions, including Ellie Jean and a couple players that have moved on. A year after winning the national championship, Penn State's roster was pretty much decimated by the World Cup as <laughs> they had five Americans and a German that were playing in the World Cup. That's such a great thing, right? To be so good that the top players want to come to your school, but then that's what happens, is that when the big tournaments come into play and come on that calendar, they leave. So then it 
I think the silver lining to that is you get other players who didn't expect to get that much playing time has the opportunity to grow quicker in the college game due to extended minutes. That's a great point. There's some players on the field today that were able to step up. There's some players on the field today that were on the field as starters when Penn State won that national championship in 2015. As you see, Dubs, the freshman from Switzerland. Penn State's always done a nice job of just mixing in a couple of international players. Ones that are always technical and can help build the ball in tight spaces. The European players usually have a tactical advantage over most American players because the game is much more cerebral there. Not as athletic, transition-based. So that you need to learn how to break down tight spaces because teams are so well organized. And that's what those players bring is that savvy and that tactical noose that matures every other player around them once they learn to play next to him and grow. But right now for Illinois, they need to learn and need to shut down this midfield of Penn State. What Penn State is doing is every single time they ball, get the ball in the midfield, they're changing the point to the other flank or holding onto it, which is forcing the back line of Illinois. They're dropping off so much, creating more space for the midfield to create. Here's Ellie Jean. If you watch that Michigan game, the last 10 minutes, this is what she was doing, end line to end line, and then she finally got to the end line, dropped one on a dime to Shiva with over 60 seconds remaining, and Penn State moves on. Look at they switch the point of attack. <laughs> Look at this, and then it frees up the wide channel, and Shiva goes. Shiva earns the corner kick, corner kick Penn State. Over 10 minutes into this one, Grand Park, Westfield, Indiana, if you've ever been I joke about it being one of the seventh wonders of the world. I mean, there are a million fields out there. It's incredible. Then you go indoors in those three full-size soccer fields. We got lots of space in the Midwest. It's incredible. Here's Emily Ogle, the redshirt senior from Strongsville, Ohio. Ogle, good corner kick. And I safety first will knock it out of there as Mayday doing the work all over the field. Back it up, fine. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up, fine. Back it up. Keep going. Keep going. We talked about the energy yeah, there it is, Mark. that Penn State was worried about coming from Illinois. I haven't heard it and I haven't really seen it. And I think Penn State did the first key has achieved their first objective and their game plan coming into this is to have more enthusiasm more energy in the first 20 minutes to nullify that something that illinois prides itself on is coming out guns blazed in the first 20 minutes of every game yeah that was your number one bear key to the game and you're right i'm not seeing a whole lot of dancing over there so mission accomplished for penn state this is a Dangerous ball, turnover for Penn State, as that was Alina Ortega Hirado with a bad ball squared. Picked off by the Illini. George now on it. And she'll push toward the end line. Looks like she was going for a deflection and a corner kick, but Penn State let it slip through. Couple unforced errors, Alina Ortega Hirado. We saw Shea Moyer as well knock it backwards causing a corner kick some rare mistakes from your regular season champs and give credit to illinois and their offensive players pressing correctly defensively to cause those errors and to give up the ball in the final third in key positions Five, two, Penn State comes out. And a four, three, three. Fifteen minutes in. Illinois had a share of the possession. Another chance to get it inside the 18. They drop it out, shot from distance, and once again, not able to get over the ball, so not on target, out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick. It's Kelly Mayday, who's been very busy. And this all starts with an entry ball to center forward, who drops it back, goes wide, and then it's done again, 10 yards higher up. And you get to see how that interplay and interchange of movements and the inner passing between the front and the midfield is creating opportunities. That from a long distance, not able to test Dennis and goal. 
but that will buy confidence for the Illini that they're able to build against a well-organized defensive side. Yeah, Illinois with three shots already. Penn State does not have a shot, as you see here on our Big Ten Network screen. Made a four goals and three assists. The junior from Chicago, she had the game winner and a big win over a very good Nebraska Cornhusker team in the regular season. Speaking of Nebraska, they'll face Minnesota next. There's Erica Dombach and Cook. Boy, talk about consistency, continuity, togetherness. Those two. <laughs> Humor. Yeah, they're fun. Those two are always cracking each other up. And Cook, the assistant coach, might be the funniest player that I ever had the privilege to play with. Illinois shot from distance again, as this time dialing it up there was the center forward, McKenna Silver, the freshman from Crystal Lake, Illinois. And that's frustrating to have so many shots come from distance. But realistically and defensively, you're like, fine, take it. You can have all those shots from distance because you're so far out. It takes so much time for that ball to get towards our goal. It allows more time for our goalkeeper to get in good position and if needed, save it. So we'll give you that. You can have that. Silver on that Big Ten all freshman team. Referee. Let him play. I like it. Turnover. In the middle there. Let's hope Breslin with one too many touches. And now Illinois will bomb it long. Long throw from Amanda Dennis. She tossed it past midfield <laughs> on one bounce. That was awesome. Hey, see some goalkeepers that can't kick it that far. That's huge to have that ability of distribution. A little too much power on that one, but had that connected, that would have been a, one of those transition moments that Illinois is worried about. It's interesting to think about goalkeepers that can throw it a long way. Listen there, start at Penn State. She's now the number one choice for Jill Ellis on the U.S. Women's National Team. Penn State, patient. They don't have a shot yet, but they continue to do what Penn State does. There's a shot. Talia Ferry. Right to Jalen Cunningham. The show for the Nittany Lions by number 19, Frankie Talia Ferry. Talia Ferry so comfortable with her back to pressure. Watch it that cut against the grain. First touch, then uses her body to separate herself from the defender, buying her enough time to turn around and get a shot on that quick release. Penn State, you talk about sharing the wealth. They got three players with seven goals. Talia Ferry at 19 points. Carrie Abello, who is out with an injury, took a little nick against Michigan. And then Kristen Schnur, who will come on here probably in the first half, the super sub, she also has seven goals. Free kick opportunity here for Illinois. Usually, it's some sort of designed play. Popped in. Keeper comes out. Still loose. Illinois can score. Looks like it went off the near post. And a little bit of scramble there from Dennis as she came out. The ball was flicked, and she was not in a good position. Oh, Dennis comes out too late. So, Real doesn't know she's coming out for it. And you get to see Mayday so quick trying to get on the end of that. Excuse me, Murray, look at this. Look how fast she is. Look how explosive she is in a span of five yards, able to get something on it, just not at the right angle. Hit it with the right part of her foot. The quick release had enough power that would have bypassed the defender and gone on the back of the net, but just was so wide, didn't have the angle to eke it around the post. Katie Murray, the craftier of the two. Maroney, the grittier of the two. And you saw right there Murray showing that craftiness, that quickness to get that shot on target. Your number five seed, Illinois, is looking good here. Of course, no goals to show for it, but they've definitely had more of the play. Second team, all Big Ten for Murray, the senior from Cincinnati. 
the flip throw here for the Lion Eye. They've had a lot of flip throws over the years under Janet Rayfield. Cleaned up now by Penn State. Again, that patience, they keep it on the ground. Try to play the beautiful game, pushing forward. Talia Ferry making a run on the right side was Williams. They go left side. Dubs was over there, and a turnover again for Illinois. So Illinois has been forcing some mistakes from Penn State. Good ball dropped in. Dennis this time had it read perfectly. Uh, Dennis is playing very high off her line, playing very aggressive. In that case, it paid off because she was able to get onto that ball. Otherwise, I do think Mayday would have been able to get on top of it, but she's got to have to watch that aggressiveness, rein it in a little bit, especially on those balls. She's not 100% sure because we saw what could happen when she guesses wrong. Emily Ogle to Jean. Cleaned up by George, senior from Chicago. Again, mistake there from Penn State, Illinois. Try to get numbers forward. That's Mayday, nobody else home. Mayday is bringing her championship form, at least early on. She's brought, talk about that energy and enthusiasm, she's brought it on the field as they play it forward. Again, Dennis will just deal with it. She's more that speedster that's reading where that first or second ball might land. And we got to see her explosiveness in within five yards, which allows her to get onto those things that she may not win in an aerial challenge due to a shorter stature. So her combination with Silver up top, who's more that holder of the ball will receive it, play it off. Then they're looking for Mayday to be that one that's more that penetrating vertical ball. I and I winning those second and third balls. But I kind of like what you said, though, about Penn State being okay with these shots from distance from Illinois, and it's almost like they're just waiting to pick their poison, and then they can be lethal when they want to. I think they believe in their game plan so much. They know they're going to create opportunities. As long as they keep finding Ogle in the middle, finding Williams, spraying it out wide, and then continue to move the ball up, central, wide, central again. They believe in that. They think it'll pay dividends at some point in the game. And Penn State, with that patience, earns a corner kick. Good work down the right side there by Shiva. Corner kick for Penn State to be taken by number two. Marissa Shiva, the senior from Sellersville, Pennsylvania, part of the Penn Fusion program. Emily Ogle just feels like she's been there forever. Redshirt senior for Penn State. Both hands in the air, right foot ready. Ogle. Top of the six. That's where you want it. It'll fall to Williams. Cleared at the six. Penn State will stay with it. Shiva, who started this sequence. Back to Ogle. Ogle with her left foot this time. Good ball. Red there, though, by Jalen Cunningham. Jalen Cunningham had a beat on it, like a center fielder was ready to go. It comes out to Shiva. Nice little play. Ogle had done the overlap outside wide. Does a little deception. Cuts it back in. Looking for the far post. Looking to connect. But well done by Cunningham. Able to get onto it and read it the entire way. George fouls Williams in a dangerous position. And Penn State, we just talked about picking their poison. They're all over Illinois right now. And now they've got this free kick because of this foul. When George comes up, approaches the ball completely incorrect. Her body positioning on how to defend that was wrong. Williams is able to earn her team a dangerous free kick. Selena Ortega Harada, the German, Emily Ogle, Charlotte Williams. Who are you going with here, Kate Markgraf? Ogle. Ogle. <laughs> we 
We've seen Ogle score from this distance right here on the Big Ten Network, and it does look like Ogle's going to take it. Ogle keeps it down on the ground. She'll get it right back. Quick little give and go there with Shea Moyer. Off. Ogle. Kept alive by Dubs. Are you surprised Ogle decided to keep that free kick on the ground like that, Kate? Well, when she had, the, when she took the free kick, she picked her head up. There was that gap in between the wall and the first defensive player outside the wall. That defensive player ended up cutting over, and I believe it was Veland a little bit to be able to pick that up. Shiva's gotten off down near the end line. Can she get to it? I think she was too late. It'll come back to Illinois. The pace starting to pick up here on semifinal Friday. There's Maddie Elliston off. A couple assists from Omaha, Nebraska. So when Ogle steps up, it looks like Veland is free, but then watch. She ah. So I was incorrect. She I thought she thought the gap was bigger. And that Barker, excuse me, was a little bit farther left, but it was just poorly hit by Ogle. Alicia Barker was there. She's second team all Big Ten. And perhaps the biggest reason why Janet Rayfield decided the three-back system would work because of the play of Barker. Yeah, they stepped up huge, didn't they? Her communication and organization. Jean set in. A little flick there from Talia Ferry. Back to Ogle. Ogle again keeps it on the ground. Just for the Lions, number two, Alina Ortega Hurado, they call her OJ, the senior from Germany, can play pretty much every position except goalkeeper, according to Erica Dombach. Westfield, Indiana, as you mentioned, farmland. They're out in the elements. We saw a whole lot of that last year, Kate, but Wynn could still play a role over the weekend as well. Last year, you needed to score when you had the wind or you're going to be in trouble. Well, it was horrible conditions last year, and it was just as much as battling the opponent as battling them. We get to see this is actually not, this is perfect weather if you're in the Midwest. You're used to this. As long as it's not sleeting rain, and huge gale force winds. This is something that you've grown accustomed to during conference play. Shiva. Nolf will square it. Quick ball from Warrior. That's Jean who has come forward quite a bit. Dubs now Williams. Williams has Ogle, Talia Ferry, and on the far side, Shiva in the 18. At least they were. Now they'll check back as the line pushes up for Illinois. Maddie Elliston Dolph. She's not afraid to take a shot from there. Boyer turns it over. See what Illinois can do on the counter. Diego Harada will win it. Now Gene will play it over to Rio. Just like that, Penn State back on the attack. Right back. Nolf. Shot from Williams. Looked like it hit Barker. It did. It'll be a corner kick. Corner kick, Penn State. The movement of the front six of Penn State is so fun to watch. They're never in the same spot for more than three or four seconds if they're not on the ball. They clear out space so quickly, and they find new ones. That right there, Nolf able to come inside because of a sacrificing run of another player. Williams tries to unleash a shot, and Veland blocks it. Third corner for Penn State with under 15 minutes remaining here in the first. Still no score. Your number one seed, Penn State, number five seed, Illinois. Ogle, high lofted ball, pinging around. First touch there was from Real. 
Williams. Nice little give and go. Rio who came forward for the corner kick. Sent in. And there's the craftiness of her fellow center back. That would have been center back to center back for a goal <laughs> as it was Rio to Alina Ortega Herrado. I don't think I've ever seen a center back attempt to try to score a goal with a powerful shot with a Cruyff slash <laughs> pass but real nice little deception to buy yourself some space Harado's body positioning not one where she can get a shot off in any way I think she's just trying to keep the ball going but look at the wind already you can tell we were looking at the flags earlier the wind is heading in that direction so anything on the ground in the air is going to carry in Penn State's favor in the attacking I think the wind aided that one a little bit it's pretty creative though imagine if that got in well and as you know as we talked about Erica Dombach's not afraid to put OJ up in the attacking spots late in the game when she needs a goal so she's got some of that magic in there i just i don't know about that move right there though <laughs> i think it's great you can't script everything and if you did then it'd be easy to defend and stuff like that you can't plan for she was locked down the defender did anything and she picked the one option she had to keep the ball going and to keep the speed of play at a high tempo and that was it it almost resulted in a surprise opportunity on that like, how much fun would it have been to have, like, an overback Mark Graf goal and then play the rest of the game? Would you guys be talking about it the entire time or what? Because you figure those two would have. I think I would have retired. I would have retired after, like, my first nine months on the national team if that happened. Because you finally got a penalty kick, right, to score one? Oh, my gosh. I did not need stats to make myself, to tell myself I was a good player. I was fine. I always denied PKs, by the way. Really? Talia Ferry going to take a shot but right to Jalen Cunningham. Talia Ferry came up lame a little bit on that one. And you'll be able to see it. She hasn't been able to connect the ball. She has a knack for finding it and quickly turning with her back to pressure. She uses her body extremely well and with those quick feet she's able to get around it but after that shot something to watch for moving forward. She came up a little bit hobbly and trying to extend it her leg on that side, the one that's wrapped. Something to watch as this game goes on. She is the player that scored both goals against Illinois the last time these two teams played one another at the end of September. Nolf. Talia Ferry still has support. Thought she was gonna go back to Nolf, tried to get it to Shiva. OJ back over to Jean. Moyer who sits and connects, tries to find Ogle when she can. Sheba knocked out of bounds. Marissa Sheba, the 5'3 senior from Pennsylvania. Number six, Katie Way, replacing number 15, Kelly Mayday. It's one of the smallest teams Penn State has ever had as they had a couple of players go pro early, including Laura Frygate, who lit up this tournament last year. She was incredible. A big loss for Penn State and a tough loss, but clearly they've been able to deal with it as they're once again your Big Ten or regular season champs. Ortega Harada, Obo now back out to Nolf. Eva. Nolf, again, you're right back into the 18. Ogle, good little move. She can hit it left or right. You can tell she wanted it back on her right. Now Shiva again. Lofted ball right in front as Cunningham had to deal with her teammates laying down in front of her, had to jump over one. Sidestep, stays with Penn State. Nolf again. I was waiting for Knopf to finally go ahead and just take one on her own, and that's exactly what she did. Slid in, and Illinois survives that latest offensive flurry from the Nittany Lions. Well, the sustained attack of the Nittany Lions is forcing almost like a bunker-like defense with all 10 players back from Illinois. Shiva with the long-distance cross, and you get to see Talafeli actually pushes down Barker, and that's the reason why there's a player on the ground and Cunningham's trying to jump over it. And the inability from Illinois to clear it creates a sustained attack. There, Knopf gets a chance. That's their outside right back. Has enough time to go all the way forward. And because Illinois can't clear it, they're not a threat offensively, so it can push the entire back line up 
for the Nittany Lions. Look at that shot summary right there. It goes right into what you were talking about, just dealing with long distance shots and then picking the poison. Right after we said that, it's been seven <laughs> shots to none for Illinois. It was almost like they just took a couple little tight little punches and dealt with it and it was on. Turnover here. Illinois, numbers aren't bad right now. Four on four. And I think you're right, Kate, as you're in here signaling one more pass to the <laughs> right, right? Go wide, right? go yeah. wide. Right down the spine. Penn State does exactly what Illinois probably should have done. They go wide. Shiva, her move toward the end line. Great ball across and cleared out of there by George as George and Barker interchange. And another corner kick for Penn State. And thumbs up coming from Kelly Beeler. One thing you have to be worried about with Penn State is their ability to transition so quickly with numbers centrally and wide. So it goes up the spine, gets out to Shiva, who excels in wide areas, beats Barker. One of her best crosses so far that she's had in the game, well defended to clear out by George. It was one of the subs, Kelly Beiler, waiting there. Gave the thumbs up after. There's Rio, who's looked good coming forward for corner kicks, climbing the ladders, got pretty good vertical. Penn State right back into the 18. As Real stays forward. Big target in Real, the redshirt junior from Fairfax Station, Virginia. Got more subs coming in here in the final eight minutes. So we asked Erica Dombach this week about, hey, you won the regular season, you know you're gonna get a high seed, you've got an impressive record, best RPI in the league. What's your game plan here? And before we could even get the question out, you heard her, Kate, it was, we're going for it. We're approaching this, we wanna win it, we want the hardware, we want the best seed we can get. We're going for it all the way and that's how we're attacking this weekend. I think when all the expectations of a team are shed, because they had a couple players leave unexpectedly. This is the smallest roster, like you said earlier, that they've ever had. And they started off conference a little bit weak, which going two and two. People started to doubt them. And when that came, when that happened, she told us that this team buckled down and started to believe themselves and rely only on themselves because they knew they had such a small roster, they had a bigger hurdle to overcome than what they've ever had. So they shed all expectations. So this team is just more poised and I would say more motivated than ever because now it's they have something to prove even though they might it sounds crazy the fact that they won the Big Ten conference and now they're in the Big Ten championship but they have something to prove because they've had to fight more battles to get to this point than I think they've had in recent history and that was 100% reflected in her comments well said Kate zero zero six minutes plus here remaining in the first Erica Dombach, played for John Daly at William and Mary with Ann Cook. Of course, William and Mary also the home of Jill Ellis. Gene, bring it back to Rio. Trying to find a little bit more of the game as Illinois has now gone 20 minutes without a shot. Cunningham. You can tell as good as Penn State is, they're going to have to be pretty special to get one by Jalen Cunningham, who's in top form, second team all Big Ten goalkeeper. And she's got so many numbers in front of her right now, with Illinois bringing more and more numbers back in order to handle the sustained attack that happens for minutes upon minutes of time that we've seen so far in this game. Penn State's gonna have to find that pocket of opening through the movement that we've seen, but release a little bit quicker. Good ball in front, little touch. A stumble there as Penn State plays it up to Christian Schnur, who can flat out finish. Tied for the team lead with seven goals, the super sub, Redshirt Junior. She has started some games, but 
Erica Dombach really likes what she brings off the bench, and you almost saw her take the team lead in goals if she could have settled that ball a little bit better. Her movement off the ball is what I've noticed, because she's taller than anyone else on the field right now. So the minute she came on, you see this player in white just doing the sacrificial runs for other players to get open. But she also has the skill to find the ball. There's Schnur, there's Williams. You're right, Schnur will take a player away, and if that creates space for Williams, it's on for Penn State. And she's more mobile than Talia Ferry, so I think Talia Ferry might have a knock or something because of how she pulled up. We see Talia Ferry going a little bit one-on-one, -on -one, trying to do a little dink to the far post to Williams. And that's just too much to ask of the center back and the defenders of Illinois to have three players on them. It's the movement of Penn State, the ball traveling from one side to another. It is making this usually very organized on the, on the line eye back line be in bits and pieces back there, especially on that far post. Kelly Ferry, Williams wanted that one. I think if Byler could have dummied that, it would have been on Byler's touch. Wasn't quite there. 318. Jean. Like Jean has been effective on that left side, just as Nolf has on the right side as part of the Penn State attack. Kelly Ferry. Right to Jalen Cunningham. So they take dubs out because she struggled, honestly, connecting passes. And they put Tyler Ferry out wide, so she has a bit more space on the ball. We get to see her pace and power that she can connect when she has the opportunity to. Illinois, it's been a long time since they've been able to get a Shot off. Williams, good touch, good vision. Bala is into the game now as well for Erica Dombach as she brings on a lot of subs. Tega Gerardo, Williams. Now out wide here to Balo. Down near the end line, Balo can't get it through Illinois, but she does earn another corner kick for Penn State. Corner kick for the Nittany Lions. To be taken by number two, Emily Ogle. An opportunity for Emily Ogle here to see if Penn State can get one before halftime. A little over 90 seconds remaining. Fifth corner. And Emily Ogle's taking them all for Penn State. Been looking for Rio on quite a few of these. Where that number three jersey. This time they go low with it. As Tego Hirado made a near post run, and they'll say it went off of Penn State and back to Illinois. Substitution for the fighting Illini, number 16. So, Kate, as we think about these final 65 seconds, Illinois, they did bring that energy early, but they haven't had a shot in almost 30 minutes. So, if you're Janet Rayfield, Knowing what you saw in the first 15, what might be her message to her team at half? She's got to win that midfield battle with her three. Those three in the midfield are not doing a good enough job defensively to shut down Penn State's change of point. If they're able to keep it on one side, they're going to be better poised defensively and make the play predictable so her defenders can clear the ball. Right now, Penn State's able to do whatever they want because the individual defending is not good enough in that midfield. Penn State can connect it one more time here. Final 30 seconds remaining. They'll go back to Cunningham. One again by Talia Ferry, who has been pushed out left, as Kate Markcraft just told you. Gene, pretty good ball, but Cunningham is there as they were looking to get it over Cunningham with Williams making that run at the edge of the six, and that will count it down. Illinois with a quick start, though, but Penn State, the last 30 minutes all over the Illini, but nobody able to get one by Jalen Cunningham. It's 0-0 through 45. Well, it started out Penn State, and then Illinois grew for about 15 minutes, and we're starting to able, starting to build attack and going from front to back through excellent interplay. 
but then the last 20 minutes, it was all Penn State. A little bit of subs helped control that, as well as Ogle starting to take over the game. Semi-final Friday on the Big Ten Network. Your number one seed, Penn State. Your number five seed, Illinois, Minnesota, and Nebraska will feature in semi-final number two. Somebody will get a spot in Sunday's championship game, but that somebody needs to score a goal. It's 0-0 zero, zero here. Penn State and Illinois on the Big Ten Network. Big Ten women's soccer semifinal number one. Your top seed, Penn State. Your fifth seed, Illinois. Zeros here through the first half of our first game and welcome you back inside dean linky along with kate mark graff and kate early on it was illinois but the last 30 minutes it was all penn state illinois was able to create some moments where they were dangerous but they were all from distance only a goalkeeper air created their first real chance but after that penn state's midfield started to take this game over and execute their game plan which is all about finding and exploiting spaces on the width after going central first so you can see why penn state is the number one team in the conference we roll to the highlights and you'll see Illinois they had five shots in the first 15 minutes and it all starts from a little bit of interplay this one coming from Silber finding up top up back and through and this is one of those long range shots that we were talking about and just unable to connect now this is the goalkeeper error that I was talking about Dennison Dennis comes out doesn't get it but the quick thinking play of Murray almost creates an opportunity she just was too far wide and didn't have the angle to slip that one in and Penn State settled down, and they had nine shots to none in the final 30 minutes. Just look at their ability to spring the ball around quickly. It allows Illinois to just all of a sudden pack the back, which creating all the gaps on the flank, and it's chance after chance. Shiva, so active, loves to get in line, loves to take people on, and here she's going to go take Barker on, and one of the best crosses she had in the game almost is able to connect in a dangerous spot to Moyer. Trisha George with the clearance there. Ten shots for Penn State. Five for Illinois. At one point, it was 5-1 Illinois. Illinois did come out strong. They, can, they do have areas where they can grow in confidence, but they need to be better individually defending so they can stop Penn State from getting so many opportunities. And as so far, Cunningham in goal has come up big for Illinois when they need, but they need to stop exposing her so much. Last time these two teams met in the Big Ten Tournament was 2015. Penn State won that game, and they won a national championship. Zeros here at the half from Grand Park. Semifinal number one, Penn State and Illinois. Semifinal Friday on the Big Ten Network. A big day of action, all sports on BTN. It starts with this soccer match between the number one seed Penn State Nittany Lions and your number five seed Illinois Fighting Illini. Westfield, Indiana, just outside of Indianapolis, the great Grand Park, our hosts once again. If you're the number one team, there's no surprise that when you look at the Meyer Season Awards, there's going to be a lot of Penn State Nittany Lion flavor for sure. And once again, they're dominating the entire war award book. Dombach, no surprise that she's there, especially with her reduced roster, what she's been able to do. Devin Kirk coming up big for Ohio State. Rio, one of the best lockdown defenders in the Big Ten, getting a nod this year. And then Emily Ogle, U.S. International, good on both sides of the ball. And then April Bach and stepping up big for the Gophers. We'll see her later on today, leading goal scorer. And McClellan, freshman of the year, taking over after the impressive Casey Murphy. Yeah, big time job for Megan McClellan. A lot of great freshman goalkeepers in the league as well. That's our Meyer Season Awards. Three Nittany Lions in there. Will one of them score a goal when we come back? It's zeros at the half. A little bit of wind out here at Grand Park. Stay with us on BTN. Soccer on BTN is brought to you by Discover Card, the official credit card of the Big Ten Conference. By Bear, proud sponsor of the Big Ten Conference. Bear, science for a better life. And by Dr. Pepper and its local Dr. Pepper bottlers, proud sponsors of the Big Ten Conference. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of fans. Speaking of Dr. Pepper, let's 
have our Dr. Pepper look right at the 2018 Women's Soccer Championship. Only the top eight seeds get in. All the games were tight, Kate. They were in the number six versus seven game, the two remaining seeds, lowest seeds in the semifinals. That is an evenly matched game that's coming up next. I'm excited to see how important set pieces are in that game. And this one, we have the two highest scoring offenses in Penn State and Illinois fighting off in the, in the first semifinal. State has not scored yet, but they have outscored opponents 23 to 1 in the second half and have not allowed a second half goal in their last 16 games. In fact, their last second half goal they allowed was versus UCLA back on August 25th. And there's that energy and enthusiasm, the dancing for the Lion. They're going to need more of that to get back in this one. That is just unreal <laughs> in a positive way. It's one of those things when you, that's on your team, that's when that's your bench you look over and you smile and it kind of releases some pressure so it's such a great attribute that everyone's contributing in their way pot in their own way including crutches as an opponent if I would see that I'd be like I just want to crush that team like come on let's go it actually motivated me both ways so it's a way that just adds a little bit of extra intensity into the game that's such a great point last year during the Big Ten Women's Lacrosse Championship Penn State was scoring all kinds of goals and they had a different celebration for every goal and you can bet going into their next game their opponent knew what was going on <laughs> over there and they minimized their creativity to say the least <laughs> it's fun though when the student athletes get to it's competitiveness it's just yeah. different it's different ways to fire your, your team up or help your team in whatever way possible there's nothing better than a fun bench just bring some levity to the situation when needed or gives you that extra little bit of push when you're lagging. Second half underway, Penn State in white, your number one seed, Illinois in blue, your number five seed, Kate Markgraf, I'm Dean Linky, delighted to be with you for two today on semifinal Friday. Talia Ferry dropped back, dangerous Williams, but right to Cunningham, just could not get any power on it. And we see Schnur back in the lineup, Talia Ferry's out on the left. We saw that pay dividends when Schnur came in. That's when Penn State was able to hold the ball and be more dangerous. There's that stat we just talked about. It's 23 to one in the second half this season. Have not given up a second half goal since August against the Bruins. Popped in, no problem though for Dennis, as you saw those first half highlights, just one shaky moment from Dennis, but her teammates were there to help clear up the dangerous opportunity from Katie Murray. Tega Ferrado, second team all Big Ten. who had it for a moment. Kenna Silver made the all Big Ten freshman team. Talaferi, who started up top, and as Kate told you, the first half moved out wide and was affected by a wide combination with Gene. Just so good in tight spaces right there. They figured out a way to handle the press through some quick passes, a give and go, without ever losing their composure. They weren't able to get anything on the byproduct and pass it into the next channel from the midfield to the forward channel. But that's that composure that Tally Ferry has, whether she's playing up top as the central striker or out wide. Penn State down near the right corner. Talia Ferry, push it back out. Chance to get it inside the six. And there's Cunningham. Cunningham booms it long. Turn, trying to find Schnur and Williams. Battle with the two front runners, Mayday and Silver. Mayday a junior, Silver a freshman.
possession. The halftime talk from Janet Rayfield, the head coach for the Illini, a true advocate for women in the game. Janet Rayfield, for sure. Big advocate for NWSL. Big advocate for United Soccer Coaches. Back in 2012, Janet Rayfield, the head coach of Illinois, became the first woman to receive the prestigious United Soccer Coaches Honor Award given for integrity on and off the field. A phenomenal advocate, as you know, Kate, for women in sports. First woman to receive that prestigious award. Just a pure mentor. Ball dropped in. Williams! And a sliding tackle. Williams stays with it. Little move. Williams will drop it back to Talia Ferry. And Williams so close. Alicia Barker, second team all Big Ten, comes flying in to save the day for the Illini. Moyer will reset it with Knopf. Schnur is just outside the six. Ashiva will try to find it. And a big save here coming from Barker. And last ditch defending saves. An excellent goal scoring opportunity from being converted. Williams not able to unleash it quick enough. Wanted to bring it down and allowed Barker enough time to get something on that. But look at the numbers that just came back. And now we're back in that bunker for the Illini. And it's a matter of Penn State figuring out their right way to break it down. They are able to drop numbers so quickly and cover up gaps that are exposed and seem so fast that Penn State needs to play quicker. Ogle, Talia Ferry, Talia Ferry. This time gets by Barker. It was Barker the first time, then Ashley Cathro, the Canadian freshman, who came in to save the day against Williams. Talia Ferry denied again. And you can no longer call it just three in the back as we were talking about at break as Illinois dropping a lot of numbers back to try to contain this attack from the Penn State Nittany Lions. And they've made some changes too. They brought in Busher in it right back and pushing George up in that right side where Hillman was. So they're hoping that a little bit more mobility up and down that vertical flank might prevent so many opportunities coming from those wide channels. Ogle drops it. It's Williams. Pretty good pass. Far side. Shiva. And right to Cunningham. Shiva, who had the winner late against Michigan to advance to this game. And this is called the change of point ball. Came from the left channel, now central, now wide, due to Ogle to Williams to Shiva. Shiva unable to really keep it low and test the goalkeeper. That was actually the perfect angle by Cunningham to take, and Shiva hit it right into her hands. We get to see the danger. When you play a three back, how dangerous that change of point ball can be. Moyer. Doesn't take a ton of shots. She does have three goals and six assists. As Moyer pushing more forward. Ogle dropping back. Delia Ferry. Battle there with George, and George will clear it. Scored both goals during the regular season, including the game winner in the 91st minute, did Talia Ferry to beat Illinois. Here's Gene. Good move on George. George sliding tackle. I haven't heard a whistle. That was interesting right there. There's no real urgency to go track down the ball. And one back here by Penn State. <laughs> Illinois has now gone over 30 minutes without a shot. And Ellie Jean, Richard Jr. from Connecticut. And Ellie Jean taking an advanced position, does the cut and trying to beat George and you get to see her right foot plant. And with that soft ground, it looks like her ankle rolled, immediately grabs that right hand side as she was planting to unleash across. We get to see it right, watch this right foot step, her plant foot. You see it give out a little bit, roll over her cleat. I see it once and I close my eyes and call the game because <laughs> I know that pain that happens from a soft ground. It's one of those rolls where you can run it off the first time. If it happens again, you may not be able to do it. 
Yeah, it's one of those rolling, when you roll your ankle, you're going to be able to play through it. Right. And then after the game, that thing is going to be throbbing and swelling. And then it's a matter of rice, rest, ice, compression, elevation that they always tell you. But it's part of the game. It happens all the time. But it doesn't mean it. that first 10 seconds might be the worst pain you've ever experienced. And then it slowly dissipates. Yeah, she's playing in pain right now. You know it. But she's been so effective. I like the fact that she got up and is ready to go. She's going to try to walk it off. There she, there, that's a great shot here. Great work, as always, by Billy Proctor and our entire BTN crew. Championship weekend on the Big Ten Network. Delighted to be with you for the first of several. Elimination games this Friday. And now if I'm Illinois, I'm going to be tacking her all game long, thinking that she might be a little bit weak and might be exposed and not as explosive as one of the quickest backs that Penn State has. I like that George has that mentality to take it at her. It's a smart play. The work there from Illinois, just the final pass missing, trying to get Silver right down the spine. the first 15 silver she'll give it away ogle good ball from ogle to find schnur talia ferry has moved back to that number nine position whistle and a foul a ton of fouls in this one fairly clean And Silver likes to bring the ball back every time. Just getting caught up there from behind, nicking too much of the foot, getting Ogle. See the fouls, just five fouls in the game. Four for Illinois, one for Penn State. Barker. Barker and Cathro pretty much saving the day as Shar Williams was in and open. Ready to give a one nothing lead. A break day from May Day. Oh, my. What a great right-handed save there by Amanda Dennis. Kelly May Day was in. Denied by double zero. Well, May Day sitting in between two defenders. A beautiful ball placed right between them. Unable to keep it low by Mayday. Dennis, big, wide wingspan and a strong enough hand. Yeah, she's in the right position, but the fact that her hand was so strong that that wrist did not give way and allow that ball to continue its forward path and perhaps dribble in. But that is the first shot since the 20th minute from Illinois. We get to see how they can be dangerous on the transition, especially Mayday, the one that likes to get in behind with Silver, the one that is more the back to play, back to goal defend uh, forward, able to hold the ball and push it back and bring others into the game. How about that? 36 minutes without a shot and Mayday had a clear shot as anybody in this game. If not for, as you said, the strong hand of Dennis just to deaden that ball and keep it at zeros. And that's the second foul on Silver in the past four minutes. Something to watch if she continues to foul, whether that's frustration or increased intensity. But if those fouls continue to accumulate, the referee's gonna have to pull out a card. Just an excellent through ball by Murray. So good, put a little texture. You see the bend, it runs into the path of Mayday. Mayday does not keep it low, but Dennis comes out enough from her goal line, able to cut down the angles of opportunity for Mayday to slot it by her advanced positioning and then to have the strong wrist to withstand the power of that save and have the ball continue to move forward towards the goal. Two saves today for Amanda Dennis. Rose Chandler, 
like Laura Frygang, decided to go pro. And Amanda Dennis had played a ton, though, because Rose Chandler was on that U-20 team. So a couple years ago, Dennis played all of those minutes. So certainly they were in good shape in goalkeeper as Erica Dombach dealing with her smallest roster yet, but a roster that she loves. And she talks about how the fact that the roster really kind of personifies the family atmosphere at Penn State. She's got two young daughters now. She said her daughters have 23 amazing role models. She said there's not every mom that has that. As you know, I mean, you played with Carla Overbeck. She had her daughter early, and she still talks about the incredible role models for Jackson. And I had three kids while I still played. I had a set of twins and a two-year-old when I retired. Shot from Illinois and another save by Dennis. And here come the Illini. And Dennis has been strong as Illinois with a nice response. Once again, it's Katie Murray, the senior from Cincinnati. Ripped away there by George. Clean back up, though, by Penn State. Adjustments at halftime from Janet Rayfield have been big. Illinois, third break away, and Dennis with her third save. Illinois has brought it here in the second half as Peyton Willie off the bench, denied there by Dennis. Illinois creating opportunities off of transition and defensive pressing from their offensive core. We get to see Murray coming out so crafty and quick and explosive in that quick release shot. This time playing the perfectly weighted ball. Well done by Willie to realize she had to hit that one time. But Dennis, again, coming up huge off that line. When she knows her defense is beat, she has to reduce the angles that they have to score and make it more difficult to slot it into narrow, narrow options. Set across. Willie there again, and Katie Murray trying to take over this game. The senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. You think about great Big Ten players from Cincinnati, Ohio, and you think Rose Lavelle from the Wisconsin Badgers. Heather Mitz. That's Heather Mitz one? is pretty good. Ohio South, one of the best regions in soccer, along with Michigan. Boy, Rose Lavelle is on fire right now, scoring three goals in the CONCACAF qualifying as the USA punched their ticket to yet another World Cup. If the U.S. is, is going to win a World Cup, Rose Lavelle and Crystal Dunn need to be healthy. They're the two players that can break down tight spaces and bunkers with either craftiness or just that X factor you can't describe it's someone who always just figures out a way to win. There's Dubs with a great run. Mayday had that big shot. Katie Murray with a shot and the pass trying to find the substitute. Peyton Willie, the freshman from Yorkville, Illinois and Yorkville High School. And they look for Willie again. This time Rio heads it away. Illinois' confidence has turned the table. Katie Murray has been the reason why. And there's that midfield pressure. They win it right back. <laughs> Illinois basically saying, yeah, I saw that set, 23 to one. Penn State scoring in the second half, but they're ready. Nice response. Good coaching here from Janet Rayfield. This is a team that has learned, have to learn how to build up without some key stars, which allowed other players to take more responsibility like a Murray that's something that she talked about like up top having made a play a bigger role along with Maroney they were relying on some of the bigger name players to carry them through and basically Rayfield said hey you guys are got to be the ones to step up and they have but that means they also know how to withstand these moments they had a good campaign in the Big Ten but they were definitely challenged which has prepared them to withstand the moments and the long stretches of time when they've been on the back foot in this game. Their 11 regular season wins, most since 2011, as they find themselves back in the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament. Illinois 11, 7, and 1. They have a top 25 win over Duke. And they've got three wins or ties over top 50 teams as they look for Schnur. Schnur could drop over to Ogle. Williams gets behind it and right again to Cunningham.
And Schnur, unable to finish that one time, cuts it back, finds Ogle, realizing she didn't have a good look on net, drops it to Williams, who steps backwards to get her feet right and to generate enough power on goal. It's the third shot we've seen from Williams. Every single time she's falling, you wonder if something's wrong with the ground or if she's just a bit off balance and rushing her shot. Shiva will chase it down. Cunningham has made her sixth save of the game. Of course, she made three saves and penalty kicks to help Illinois advance to this matchup. State under pressure quite a bit here in the second half from Illinois but now it's Penn State back on the attack good quick touches by the Nittany Lions off those touches they look to get it inside the 18 to Schnur it bounces back Williams again here's Gene Jean had the assist against Michigan to push Penn State into this matchup. Of course, it was Jean who rolled her ankle a little over 10 minutes ago. Looks to be okay for Erica Dombach and the Penn State Nittany Lions. The speedster, number 14, Ellie Jean. So Peyton Willie had a chance to break through. She'll go back to the bench. Dubs. Cleared out of there by Barker, the second team all Big Tenor. Swinging a miss from George. First big run here in the second half from North. A couple step overs. Moyer. Now real. Both center backs pushing forward with the outside backs. Here's the left back, Gene. Once again, gobbled up by Cunningham. Who, by the way, had 10 saves versus Penn State back in September of this year. Her Actually, last year, that's her career high. So 10 saves her career high against Penn State a year ago. Shiva. Dubs making a run. Drops it back to Williams. Usually, Olgo is lurking over her shoulder. Shiva earning a throw in. Some wind starting to pick up just a little bit here at Grand Park. Substitution for the Nittany Lions, number 33. Laura Suero. See Laura Suero check into the game, number 33, the junior from Royersford, Pennsylvania. Part of the FC Bucks Freedom Club system coming up. Gene. Now Dubs, oh, an own goal, just like that. An own goal off of Alicia Barker, the junior from Woodenville, Washington, and finally Penn State able to crack through via an own goal, it's one nothing. Penn State's worth creating opportunities from getting it wide and serving it in, looking to find one of their forwards or midfielders up top, but this time, that service and Barker's movement makes it impossible for her to get her feet right. That's one of those bending balls in behind the defender. You play that ball in hopes of two things. One, that your forward can get on top of it, or two, the defender who is now facing their own goal will take a nick on it and deflect it into their goal, creating what we just saw right there. That's the reason why you play those driven balls in behind or those bending balls in behind the back line because you turn that defense and it puts the defender in a horrible position. And it's so difficult to clear those balls. Oh, and you feel horrible for Alicia Barker. Janet Rayfield calls her the tent pole. Holds it all together back there. Second team all Big Ten. Just an unfortunate touch. And it's one nothing Penn State. Now, 
Wow, Penn State, they were able to survive that early flurry here in the second half from Illinois, who came out with a great game plan, working through Katie Murray. They get the own goal. Now searching for that second, Shiva able to cross, Dubs is there. And it'll go off of Dubs, no, they'll say off of George, corner kick Penn State. Dubs didn't start the second half after a poor start in the first half, but she's making her impact and her influence grow in this game. She's the one that hit that service, that created the own goal, and that one, she goes up for the head ball and heads it into the back of George and earns her team a corner kick. Sixth corner of the game for Emily Ogle and Penn State. That is a perfect ball, Cunningham. First save, still loose. What a driven ball from Ogle, right at the top of the six. Yeah, Penn State pretty good when scoring first. 107, three and five. They're 75, 0 and five in their last 80 games. Their last loss when they scored first back in 2013 at Nebraska. And by the way, they're 11 and 0 when they score first as part of this 2018 campaign, a campaign that saw Penn State win yet another regular season title. Dubs, back to Ogle. And now Gene. You know this game is gonna have to open up now as Illinois is gonna be searching. Meanwhile, Penn State can manage a lead as good as any team in the country. By the way, it's their 19th time they've won the Big Ten regular season title, this year's title, all alone. They've won the Big Ten tournament seven times last year, right here at Grand Park. Talia Ferry gonna come on for Schnurr. Ogle's last corner kick was perfect. So get another one, goes near post this time. And off will bring it back to Rio. Good step in from Rio. Ortega Hirado. Talia Ferry. Picked up by Cunningham. We talked about it earlier. Illinois, we feel like where their RPI sits, quality wins against some top 50 teams, including the Duke Blue Devils. I think they should be there, Kate. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you. I think, they I think they have an argument that they should be in. And they get into the semis. And they don't have any bad losses. And that, to me, is more of that metric. Is there ever a game where you're like, ooh, that was a really bad loss? Because that's what those fine details, especially for those bubble teams, it comes down to that the NCAA deci decision committee, tournament committee, likes to hang their hats on. But it really is. When it comes to the bubble teams, sometimes you can't figure it out why one team gets in and another one doesn't. A lot of nerves as they announce the field. Illinois trying to get that equalizer. You know Penn State will be there. Rutgers. Impressive RPI, you gotta believe they're gonna be there. Wisconsin and Ohio State, Wisconsin 12, three and four. They have four wins over teams in the top 50 RPI. Cody Walker Hawks, Ohio State Hawkeye team. They got five wins or ties over top 50 teams. As you start to kind of look at the magic formula, Nebraska, Coach Walker pretty much saying, you know what, the only math I know is winning the Big Ten tournament. And I think Stephanie Golan felt like the same thing. Played into space. Shiva, right to Cunningham. Well, for Nebraska and Minnesota, they have to win to really get into this. They're both on the other, farther side of the bubble compared to Illinois and Ohio State which will make that game so exciting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that game. They did not play during the regular season as well. So it'll be the first time they see each other this year. I always like that when it plays off in the Big Ten tournament. 
And then what about the Northwestern Wildcats not able to make the Big Ten tournament? They're 10, 4, and 4. They got wins over West Virginia and Penn State. Going to be tough. Two wins over top 25 teams and five wins over top 50 teams for Northwestern. But remember, only eight teams get in the Big Ten tournament and Michigan sneaking in there. It Michigan. also matters how you finish, though, too, right? Like, are you finishing strong? Are you getting those wins over top RPI opponents earlier on in the season? Because part of the formula of winning this thing is how you're playing towards the end, what momentum, what luck you have, and that comes from injuries, and if you don't have any towards the end. Yeah, great point is Dubs was instrumental in that own goal, the only goal of this one. Dennis comes out. Safety first there from Penn State, an Illinois player down. Let's see if Penn State elects to knock it out of bounds. Finally, the referee with the whistle. The collision right at the top there, Kelly Mayday with Amanda Dennis. And Mayday is challenging the keeper, and she's unable, she's trying to get to the ball, and she's unable to slow herself down. Dennis was caught, not sure if she's going to come out and clear it. It was an excellent decision by Schreiro to clear the ball, realizing that our goalkeeper might not get it. And it's just one of those collisions that happens unintentionally in a game when teams are going for the ball. Mayday didn't lay, that, lay up, and there was no way that Dennis could avoid that. During the injury, the Penn State Nittany Lions huddle. Mayday has left it all out there from the opening whistle. She has been dangerous. Four goals and three assists. Alicia Barker went off of her foot inadvertently in the back of the net. Mayday still shaking off the cobwebs. I'm glad you pointed out Swero because Swero made that run back for Penn State and Perhaps without her, Dennis was a little bit in no man's land. She took a step out of the 18, and Swero's like, I better just go ahead and slide tackle this just in the smart. nick of time, yeah. It was smart. As you're a defender and you're not quite sure if your goalie can get to it, you will sacrifice what was the intended play and lay your body out on the line to clear it out of danger. It was the right call by her to do that. Talia Ferry squares it open far side. There's a perfect pass to Moyer and once again coming all the way back the Illini denying Penn State you keep this at one nothing anything can happen plenty of time for Illinois great run by Veland number 23 Dubs. So Illinois. When they win it, they have to keep possession and give it right back to Penn State. Exactly what they're doing. And the pass goes missing though on the left side. Yeah, Illinois has got that Janet Rayfield mentality. They've got three goals in the final 15 minutes of regulation this season. So that's where we are. They've shown the ability to score late. To keep their team alive is Janet Rayfield. Casey one of the legends, 23 overall seasons was at Arkansas. In fact, Stephanie Golan talking about the fact she's coming up, the head coach of Minnesota. She went to a camp coached by Janet Rayfield and Marcia McDermott at Arkansas. 
early on before she decided to go to Duke. But then what did she say? She's like, don't tell them that because that'll, <laughs> she, they may think that they're old then. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like they know it's okay. <laughs> We're all okay with it. Go on. We're good. <laughs> Back by Barker. Well, the goals of being a center back, because I feel like the center backs have been amazing. We saw Barker make a sliding tackle to save a goal. Ashley Cathro make a sliding tackle. Veland came back to save one, and then sure enough, it goes off of a center back inadvertently for the only goal of the game, Kate. And it's more heartbreaking if that was the only opportunity that Penn State would have created. But the fact of the matter is that they've created tons of opportunities, essentially against a back line as well as midfield is now bunkering in for Illinois so as heartbreaking as it is to give up a goal in that capacity it's it give credit to the fact that that Penn State was so dangerous that they created that to happen and that's an incredibly technical service to pull off to keep it away from the goalkeeper and get it in behind the back line you have to thread that needle and Dubs did that and she was rewarded for it excellent point Penn State dominant on the stat sheet particularly for the final 30 minutes of the first half and part of the second half Illinois had a little bit back and in fact three breakaways Dennis comes up big which is what you want your goalkeeper make two or three big saves perhaps and she did it Lena Ortega Hurado she may have hurt her arm or her wrist Corrado has been asked to play a little bit more central, a little bit higher up and centrally, and you see her immediately grab that arm when she's going up to block the long ball. And again, also in this cold, when you do get drilled with the ball, it does take that extra bit out of you. It hurts even more, and it stings the entire time. But thankfully, it is just an arm. Don't really need it running around. <laughs> Stretch it out a little bit. You're good to go. She's going to shake it off. Second team all Big Ten. Dan is going to take her time, try to manage this game and put Penn State right back in another Big Ten tournament championship game. They were there a year ago. Dennis, pressure there from those front two. Illinois showing the fight. That was Hope Breslin, number 10, all over Dennis. Hope Breslin calling for it. Can George get it to her? It'll be a throw in for Illinois. And Dennis has been taking advanced position the entire time. That one too cavalier to realize the pressure that was coming upon her. And Breslin almost catches her. Breslin have not said her name as much as I thought we were gonna. Five goals and three assists. Breslin is coming out off that forward line. And you get to see it awkwardly hit her face, but that would not be a handball because she's trying to protect her face, right? This isn't, yes, it's an awkward position, but to me, I get why someone does that because they're about ready to get hit by the face, hit in the face, and it's a subjective call by the referee whether or not to award that to the other team. I think it was a right non-call by the referee. Excellent explanation from Kate Markgraf. Silver. Back to Katie Murray. Rio. Now George. 50-50 ball. Elon Silver will drop it back. So you almost wonder if Janet Rayfield brought in a sub for Breslin just to get a message across, move some players around. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Breslin back in there in the final five minutes to try to get the equalizer, part of managing a soccer game where you can't really do as much coaching right and call timeouts and direct plays. George. Lion Eye. 
Showing some fight here. Tega Harada's making a run. She's over on the left side. They go right side. Turnover. It's Casey Ballo back into the game. Good minutes in the first half. Now on for Erica Dombach. Silver. Good old fashioned number nine up top. Freshman from Crystal Lake, Illinois. He's got five goals. Illinois. Mind her getting six to tie this one up. There she is. And she turned with it. Well defended by Penn State. Fisher sent it in. Player goes down in the 18. Referee waves it off. And a lot of Illini fans here not liking the non-call. Now a whistle to tend to another player down in the 18. It was number 18, Morgan Maroney, who went down. I didn't see what happened, Kate. Well, this wasn't in where, wasn't around the ball. This is an off the ball infraction. You see Maroney at the top of her box, and she knocks heads with Real and immediately goes down. That was not intentional by Real. Head to head. Just a bit of a cut, it looks like, if that is what the trainer is. Yeah, cut her face open a little bit. Away from the ball, was turning, ran right into the head of Rio, and part of those Eminem midfielders, Morgan Moroni, the senior from Castle Rock. Take one more look. You can see Rio, the center back, coming over, trying to transition, and Moroni and her. It looks like it either hit, I think she hits Rio's chin. And gets, opens up her face just a little bit. A nice little, nice little extra color on there. Has to come out, can't have blood anywhere on your body or be bleeding to stay in a game for health reasons. It's the Big Ten Defender of the Year, Rio. Colliding. There with Moroni, so it'll be Lauren Cisla, senior from Naperville, Illinois, who will come on at least until they can deal with the blood on the face of Moroni. Shiva coming back into the game as well. Two thousand eighteen Big Ten Women's Soccer Tournament on the Big Ten Network. Semifinal Friday. Semifinal number one between the regular season champs, Penn State, number five seed Illinois. We've got Minnesota and Nebraska. Those two teams going on the road and getting big wins. Nebraska at Ohio State, Minnesota at Rutgers. That's coming up for seven seed Minnesota, six seed Nebraska. Breslin, remember we said she would come back in with at least five minutes remaining. She's in there at 7.30. With the game tying goal in the second half versus Wisconsin. Forcing that one to PKs where it was the Jalen Cunningham show.
Breslin Moore Central. See if she can't combine with Silver. Good target players. Especially because they'll start to launch the ball longer. Bypass that midfield with a long ball. Get it in their attacking end and hope to either pick up that first or second ball. It's going to be critical for other players like Murray to get underneath Mayday if she's around the ball with quick little buzzing speed. With incredible engines, they still have enough in their legs to keep going and try to find that ball. Make no mistake, Illinois has found the ball in and around the six. And if not for the outstanding work of Dennis in goal, this game would be tied. Or in fact, even Illinois could have a lead. I mean, Penn State double dipping them on shots, but Illinois had some clear breakaway opportunities. And Dennis came up big with that right hand. Silver. Drop it to Mayday. Mayday looking up. Cathro has made a run. The left back, number 33. A little touch there from Murray. Katie Murray. Into Silver. Four white jerseys around her, though. Talia Ferry scored both goals during the regular season, but she's been held in check by the Lion Eye in this one. But she's still been impactful when she's getting the ball, especially out wide. She is setting up others. She also can hold onto the ball and create possession in tight moments. So instead of just kicking the ball along to bypass pressure, her and Ellie Jean have been able to combine in the second half and build the ball on the flank area. Ortega Hurata, who is pushed up here. Jean. Delia Ferry, open to earn a corner kick, and I think she's, no, she'll say no, off of Talia Ferry. She's been pushed out wide. You know, earlier we were talking about all these teams in the Big Ten, hoping to get a shot at the NCAA tournament, and I'll tell you what, the teams have been so tight, and it's been reflected in the tournament. This is the first game of the tournament that hasn't been tied with five minutes remaining in the game through the first four games and Penn State with that narrow lead one nothing and of course Penn State scoring with just over a minute remaining against the Michigan Wolverines Gene DeShiva to get to this point Illinois has got three minutes and 45 seconds to tie it Parker and Maroney hope to combine Breslin trying to find Silver foul and that will not make Erica Dombach happy because it stops the clock Caitlin Fisher Took the brunt of that foul, the freshman from Naperville, Illinois. So a yellow card as well, the clock has stopped. Probably the only foul today we've seen where someone has no intention of going for the ball. Absolutely zero, that is straight. I'm not gonna win it, so I'm just gonna do a hip check. That's a good call by the referee for relatively a clean game. That's been the one dirty thing we've seen all day. OJ move up to the midfield, but that foul stopped the clock, gave Illinois a chance to bring everybody forward. Nothing to show for it, and now Dennis will try to make up that time lost, and Dennis came up big when her team needed her breakaways, and she is the focus of our State Farm State of Success. And rightfully so. A lot of transition opportunities created counterattacks, and one in particular, her advanced positioning off her line, able to stop an excellent opportunity by Mayday with her strong wrist and positioning has kept this game where her team has kept her team in it and allowed her team to get on the board as the victors if the score stands. Penn State going to try a little bit of that death by possession and work the clock. Head down 
toward the corner. Shiva not quite ready. Illinois needs to show some urgency here. Just over two minutes remaining, and now they'll get it back. Great to have Illinois back, though, in the semifinals. Over the years, some big-time players coming out of Illinois. Vanessa DiBernardo, Ella Masser, our own Jackie Santa Caterina. <laughs> Nanny. <laughs> Mary Therese McDonald, Emily Zur, Nicole Breeze. There were some great players, particularly when we first came on the air of the Big Ten Network. As you see right there, respect the past, represent the future. A lot of those players that I just mentioned reflected in those stripes, including number seven over on the left, Jackie Manny. Loved watching Ella Master play there. Spicy. Yeah. Very spicy. Played for the Red Stars. Did you play with her on the Red Stars as well? I did. I did. She worked extremely hard, a true competitor. And Breslin coming in very quick. And this is very similar to the call we saw on the other side and that extra part. But Shiva should get a call for that one too. I'm sorry, that should have been a double card on both of them. Shiva's of course defending her player, but in the rules of the game, that's retribution. I agree. Yeah, Shiva, forearm. She's not even involved in the play. Absolutely, Breslin deserved a card right from that. Let the ref deal with it. Shiva letting her player know, letting Breslin know that's not acceptable. And I like that defending of your teammate, but you do that in the run of play. It's part of the game. You can't have someone out there wrecking all your teammates. You have to set a signal as well. Within the confines of the game, that just means going a little bit extra hard for the ball. I agree, full stop. That's like the only time we do agree. <laughs> no, but Illinois, I mean, this is a team that no one thought would be here. We said it in the open is that they only won five games last year. When I was doing the projection of who I thought would be in this tournament, Illinois was not on it based off the summer coming into it. But because they had 11 newcomers and other players step up, especially Murray in that midfield has been so critical. This team is poised for even more success next year. Yeah, I could tell it was a different team. I saw them against North Carolina open the season, and they came out and took a 1-0 lead in Chapel Hill and then went down the road to Durham and knocked off the Duke Blue Devils, and it was on. Their confidence was brewing. Their double-digit wins, and I think the committee's got to pay full attention to this team with some quality players, a great midfield. Love their system as well, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough here. An own goal, and your regular season champs... Erica Dombach said, we're going for it, want the double, and they're one step closer. Penn State has made it to championship Sunday with a 1-0 win over Illinois. Well, Penn State was the class of the competition, although Illinois did have opportunities on transition. On a whole, Penn State was able to control the game, move the ball, such a technical side that created an opportunity. Even though it was an own goal, it was their continued attempts from service from the flanks that created the chance and put Illinois in a bad defensive position that they were able to then win off an own goal. And both goalkeepers has been a familiar theme this year in the Big Ten. There's, well, look at that. It's like the two quarterbacks talking after a game. You gotta love to see that. Jalen Cunningham and Amanda Dennis. Well deserved, both of them. Big smiles. Penn State advances to the championship game for the 11th time now. As we view our Dr. Pepper tournament look number one seed awaiting the winner of Nebraska and Minnesota. Well, no surprise, Penn State is in the championship and they're gonna be playing the victor of Nebraska or Minnesota, both teams that need a win, absolutely, to get themselves off the wrong side of the bubble that they're currently in for postseason play. Penn State one step away from winning their eighth tournament title and it's their third championship game appearance in the last four seasons. Just speaks to their framework they have built for success. Semi-final Friday on the Big Ten Network. Getting started early here in Westfield, Indiana. Your regular season champ, Penn State, and Illinois ready to go. Our final score, though, Penn State 
one, Illinois zero. Coming up next, it's game two of the semis, Minnesota and Nebraska. For our producer director, Billy Proctor, Kate Markgraf, and our entire BTN crew, I'm Dean Linke. We'll be back with more Big Ten soccer from Grand Park.